Hello everyone, my name is Nisha and I am the Yogic Amnesiac and we are back once again with another episode of The Testament of Sherlock Holmes and we're about to look down this sewer that we just unlocked in the last episode. So... Come on, John. Courage! Courage. And he is another! See how you like this? Oh. And how does this feel? <laughs> Don't think he like that much. <laughs> now I'll teach him. Let's see if I'm right. As if you didn't expect it. I am so very glad to see you, Watson. <laughs> Whee! Yes, he's alive! The bad guys had better watch out now. These kids are ruining it. Grandpa's alive! And he is a good man. I knew that he was. Uh-oh, they're going to be sorry now. My grandpa rules. Yes, and my grandpa saved him. Read it. You are alive. I don't know what to feel. Relief or regret. Watson, my friend. You are not in a good state, Holmes. Neither are you. I suppose not. Can you walk? Not without your help. Why did you fake your own death? And who were those men? I have to carry on with the investigation. Alone. John, I'm innocent. I'm not an accomplice of those men. Look at me. Do I look as though I could be their boss? Am I in a position to give such orders? What a relief. Oh, my God, what a relief. But how? Curare, hemlock, a few Indian plants, and sheep's blood to create the impression of death. A pathologist who owed me a favor for the death certificate. Holmes, I was talking about this affair of... I will explain everything, my friend, but we must leave here. Yes, let's go back to Baker Street. I'll help you. Lean on me. When you're not strong. So, as you see, he managed to fake his own death, and again, unlike Benedict Cumberbatch, he actually kind of explains how it works. <laughs> Though it doesn't really make sense. Home at last. I have missed this old room very much, Watson. I put everything back in place after Baines went through it, but I didn't stay here. I couldn't face it. Sit down, my friend. It is time for you to know the full details of this case. Oh, yeah. First of all, I must apologize for the distress that this has caused you, and for my behavior, which was, I know, quite abominable. I can only hope that by the end of this explanation, you will understand that I behaved in such a way only to protect you, and that it caused me great pain to see your trust and confidence in me ebbing away. From whom or what did you wish to protect me? From Professor Moriarty. Moriarty? We should not have taken pity on him in that Swiss asylum. Do you remember, during the case of the Awakened, our indulgence has cost us dear today. He's responsible for the bishop's murder? Yes, but that was only a small detail in his plan. A detail which he had to eliminate, as it compromised the whole of his diabolical project. The bishop had in his possession a document which he suspected as being one component of a larger puzzle. The ramifications were unknown to him, but he considered the matter as sufficiently important that he should consult me. The day before our macabre discovery, his nephew, who was in his confidence, brought to him an important element which helped him understand Moriarty's grand plan. It was at that moment the two men began to comprehend the seriousness of the situation. The bishop then decided to contact me. Against his nephew's wishes? Was that what they argued about? Yes. 
But Moriarty found out that the bishop knew of his projects, and he arranged for his murder. The murderers were also supposed to bring back the document that the nephew, young Hampford, found, but they were unable to open the safe. What was the document? Evidence of Prince Woodville's implication in the project. Hmm. The nephew must have retrieved it from the Royal Archives, where he worked. A link to the crown. Yes. Moriarty wanted to overthrow Queen Victoria and place the prince on the throne of England. But that's impossible. He would have needed to create an incredible coup d'etat. Patience, Watson. First of all, Moriarty placed his pawns so they might begin to develop and encourage a tense atmosphere, ready to discredit the Queen and thereby raise Woodville's popularity. And provoke a famine so that the prince's soup kitchens could begin distributing food and he would appear as a hero. Exactly. Moriarty quickly learned that I was making inquiries as to his plan and, uh, without wishing to sound vain, he knew that I was the only person capable of upsetting his schemes. He therefore set up a plan that I be discredited and thought of as a criminal. And you played along with him? Precisely. Allowing him to believe that he had succeeded was the best way of ensuring that his attention was no longer fixed on me. Why didn't you say anything to Scotland Yard? Did you not think it strange that Inspector Lestrade was away for weeks? What? You mean to say that Baines was working for Moriarty? I understand. The Bishop's murderers were in the hands of this traitor, and you were therefore at a dead end after our investigations at the opium den. Yes, and Baines' authority allowed him access to the police archives. He changed and forged all the charges in the documents that you saw at Judge Beckett's house. It was also he who substituted the Samoan necklace for a vulgar copy. So that was why the judge went to Farley's, to obtain Baines's false information. Precisely. But they each found themselves as instruments in Moriarty's strange orchestra. Judge Beckett received entire books full of charges against me, and a journalist such as Farley will not hold back when he gets the chance to make the front page of all the newspapers in England. Uh, with regard to Farley, it was a mere case of professional misconduct. And to think that I held you responsible for the explosion of the judge's house. What a relief! But why did Moriarty have him killed? He was on the point of discovering that all the documents supplied by Farley, and therefore by Baines, were false. Exactly the opposite to what our enemy was anticipating. And where did the poison fit in all this? Unfortunately, I, I do not possess all the information on this subject. The first time that we saw the effects of this substance on the body of the bishop, the poison was evidently only at an experimental stage. It was much too potent to do anything with. Effectively. But in the second case, Kurtz, I didn't notice a great advance. However, there was one. The poison was no longer fatal. Yes, but the madness was still there. I should remind you that he attempted to devour his own dogs. Correct, Watson. But it was not the second case, as you supposed. Remember the number of other incidences of madness, either collective or individual, relayed in the press in the days prior to it? You mean to say... That Moriarty tested this dangerous mixture on a large number of guinea pigs, apparently with little success, as all those people are now dead. I say, apparently, because I do not have the least idea as to the result Moriarty was hoping for. And that's where Hans comes in, isn't it? Moriarty needed him to devise the substance's final formula. And so you helped Hans to escape so he might lead you to it. Yes, but things did not go as I had planned. The professor's men got their hands on him just after his escape. And you lost his trail? Yes, but I doubted that Moriarty would take Hans to his lair. To find him, I had only one trail, the bomb placed at the judge's house. The trail of the three Russian brothers. I found out about the mill by having the anarchist's trail followed by the children in my own secret police. Once again, their help was a determining factor. As regards knowing where to locate Moriarty's lair, I hoped to find the information in the attic of the water mill. I got to it only just in time before Baines turned up. And you were stuck then, weren't you? 
Allowing him to arrest you would have meant certain death. Regrettably. But Moriarty's plan worked in any case, as after killing Baines, I became England's most wanted man for the murder of a Scotland Yard inspector. And so you had to make sure that people forgot about you. Therefore, you orchestrated your own death so that you might continue your investigation discreetly. Oh, that was a terrible time for me, Holmes. I am sorry, my dear fellow. Well, the important thing is that you are well and truly alive. Yes, but it is not over yet. Moriarty will take action one day or another. You were saying that you had found Moriarty's hideout. Where is it? In an abandoned funfair on the outskirts of London. It is quite certain that they are all there. Shieldman, the Prince, and of course, Moriarty. If Moriarty puts the Prince on the throne, he'll have his hands on the reins of the kingdom. Her colonies, her diplomatic network, her riches, everything. Yes, including the army, the war fleet, everything he needs to help him conquer Europe. And eventually, I suspect, the world. Holmes, we have to be quick. His plan hasn't been put into action yet. Perhaps it's not too late. Let us go immediately, Watson. All right, that was a lot of story, um, but it clears up a lot of any questions that you had, so it is worth watching. But it's so long that my TV actually dimmed itself, thinking that uh, the TV wasn't in use, <laughs> and that I was just sitting there not using the game. <laughs> or maybe that was the Xbox getting confused or something, but anyway, um, I had to wiggle the joystick a little there towards the end. But this game is not over yet, and luckily that wasn't so long we can actually play a little bit now. I think we have one more cutscene and then we can actually play again. <laughs> Do you really believe that Moriarty is in there behind that fence? Something in the wind seems to suggest it, Watson. I have a peculiar acid taste in my mouth, if that is what you mean, Holmes. Well, yes. The air is tainted still with toxic fumes from the factory chimneys. I believe that I read about this place. The funfair was abandoned after the factory was built so close by. It was said that even the ice cream tasted bitter. Aren't you curious about the warehouse down there? There seems to be some strange activity taking place inside. Strange and in keeping with Moriarty's activities. Let us go and see what they're up to. Alright, so we do have a little bit of time left, so we might as well at least play some of the game <laughs> and not end it right after a bunch of talking. Because you're probably here for a let's play, not for Sherlock Holmes and Watson talking a ton. That could be used as a weapon in a necessity. Um, I think that's a really common trope in Sherlock Holmes. With this cable car, we can get up onto the warehouse roof. Is Sherlock Holmes dying and killing himself to do other stuff? Um, we'll look at that in a second, but I think there's maybe stuff down here we can look at. Actually, no, we, there's nothing over here, I don't think. Let me just... There are two guards in front of the main entrance. We will have to find another way in. Yeah. And it automatically turned me around. And then for some reason, Sherlock Holmes turned himself around again. Okay, so let's look at a couple other things before we call it quits here. Vodka. There's a little at the bottom of these bottles. Mm -hmm. Russian alcohol. Holmes, the three brothers. Okay. I'm pretty sure vodka is a very popular drink. Maybe not so much in the 1800s, though. I'm not well versed on my 1800 liquor, 18, uh, liquors from the 1800s, I guess I should say. This motor is from the cable car. <laughs> Empty. Judging by the smell, I would say that it's an oil reservoir. Hmm. Look at this hole. This motor needs a starting handle. That doesn't look like something that is supposed to, you know, be there. There's a little petrol left, but not enough to start the motor. 
Given the maintenance, this cable car isn't used very frequently. True, Watson, but let us hope that it is still working. This hole just looks like something that maybe... Look at this hole. No, um, maybe it's just a design on the side or something, not, you know, something you would actually use. Cutting pliers, they could be useful. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. There is a metal ladder stuck under the cable car. Okay. So clearly we cannot grab it. Um. Can I cut that there? Oil! Good. A bottle of motor oil. Cool. And now we need petrol. Oh. No, I can't do... Um, can I pick it? Oh, yes! And I didn't actually have to pick it this time. A crank. Okay. And I don't think this handle will do anything. The lever is stuck. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, I want to say this oil is for the motor. Seeing as it's motor oil. <laughs> this motor is from the cable car. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um... Okay, so the handle can go here. The crank is in place. Cool beans. I wonder if we can use the vodka in the engine. Yes! We can. That's awesome. Here's what we can use for fuel. Oh, that took you a little while. Let us hope it works. It works! Cool. We are going to separate. I will find a way into the fair, and you must investigate the warehouse. Very well, I'll do that. There is no one on the roof. If the machine should get out of control, then just use the brake. There ought to be one. I should hope so. Anyway, there's no other choice. And when I've found out what is going on down there, what should I do then? Come and join me in the fairground. You can follow my route to get over the fence. Then you should find me easily enough. Good luck, my dear fellow. All right. So we can go to the warehouse now and then, or we'll go there as Watson and then we'll get into the fair as Sherlock Holmes. But I think that's enough for this episode. We will come back and finish this up in the next episode or maybe not finish it, but we will make progress in the next episode. We'll see where this leads us and what happens and all that fun stuff. Um, I think that's all. I can't, like we are so close. I really wish I could give you guys a better estimate of how many more episodes there are going to be. But it's, you know, it's not that many, but this is a pretty big area also, so I don't know. And I cannot remember if there's any areas after this. This might be the last area, but I'm not sure. So, anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying this. Like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next episode, and we will go to the warehouse and probably into the fair as well. We can probably do both of those in one episode, but I'm not sure. We'll at least go to the warehouse and figure out what's going on there. So... I'll see you guys later.